You're watching Swipe coming up on this week's show. We find out if artificial intelligence can make beer taste better. Updating diagnoses, is this the quick and pain-free way to hunt for mouth cancer? And we think outside the box in our games review. Hello and welcome to Swipe. This week we've come to a brewery in South East London to find out about beer. It might not sound like much of a techie story, but one company here is using artificial intelligence to try and make its beer taste better. But does it work? Funnily enough, we'll volunteer to find out. People have been brewing beer for thousands of years, but a pair of London-based entrepreneurs think they've come up with a way of improving the process. They've created a beer with the help of artificial intelligence, once customers have tried it, they give feedback via Facebook Messenger, which is interpreted by an AI system called Abby. An algorithm then works out how to turn this information into better tasting beer. We're not taking the brewer out of the equation here. We're using the AI to augment the brewer's skills to ensure that they can have all of the customers in the room, thousands and thousands of customers, to get feedback on the beer to make it a better product. By using AI, the team can process a huge amount of data. This would take a very long time if it was being done by humans, and turning the information into an improved recipe would be much harder. So far, Intelligent X's beers have evolved 12 times, based on online feedback. Some of our customers want to have very, very detailed questions, asking very interesting questions and deep uh, information about kind of flavour profiles and things like that. Some of our customers just kind of want to say, I liked it and I didn't like it. And part of the questioning and part of the technology is there to kind of work out what sort of customer you are, what questions should we be asking you, and how might that change in the future. One of the drawbacks of merging technology with brewing is the image it projects. Many beer connoisseurs like to know where their pint was brewed and who made it. So could AI put people off buying the beer? Anything that involves market research and responding to customer tastes, you need to get that into balance with something that gives a bit of individuality. So what we've also seen in the history of brewing is, you know, big breweries that have, you know, focus grouped beers to death and ended up producing products that are quite bland. Um, and this could, you know, my worry would be this could be just an extension of this. The alcohol industry is competitive and brewers will always look for new ways to get the edge. Artificial intelligence is just the latest tool being used to try to reach brewing perfection. Will Sargent, Sky News. Stay with us. Still to come, I'll be meeting one of the scientists behind a new device set to make oral cancer diagnosis fast and painless. That's coming up after a roundup of this week's tech news. Britain's most valuable tech company, Arm Holdings, is being bought by a Japanese software company in a record £24 billion deal. It's being seen by some as a blow for the UK tech industry, though. Arm microchips are used in 95% of phones worldwide. The takeover by SoftBank could mean Britain will be much less involved in shaping the future. Twitter's making its blue tick available to all users. It was previously reserved for the verified accounts of high-profile figures like pop stars and politicians. Twitter has 320 million monthly users, of which around 187,000 were verified. There's a new app that lets anyone help fight disease by mapping. Mapswipe shows you satellite images of crisis-prone areas in developing countries. By tapping on your screen when you spot features like buildings or roads, you're helping mappers build detailed pictures for medical aid organisations like Médecins Sans Frontières, also known as Doctors Without Borders. And who can solve a Rubik's Cube in 5.13 seconds? Mats Volk from the Netherlands can. He's even taken the European record with that time. Also at the contest in Prague, Philip Weyer from Germany was crowned European Rubik's Cube champion with an average sold time of 7.88 seconds. <laughs> Stick around for our games review. We head to Tokyo to fight the evil mirages. But first... Now about that device I mentioned earlier. Mouth cancer isn't one of the illnesses we tend to hear much about. It accounts for one in 50 cancer cases and it's difficult to detect. But on a trip to King's Dental Institute recently, I got to see what could be a future way of detecting it painlessly and apparently more accurately. So Richard, does this device have a name? 
At the moment it's known as the microvascular scope. It's a local name for a research, research instrument that's been developed at Guy's here. And why have you invented this? The search for oral cancer is, is incredibly important. It's a very sad statistic that even now, 50% of people diagnosed with oral cancer don't survive five years, and it's usually because of very late presentation to a clinician and a late diagnosis. And we should point out that Naveen here is your colleague. She's my she research colleague. She doesn't have cancer. No, and there she's is nothing a, wrong with this young lady, as we know. A very patient patient, and we know there's nothing wrong with her because the scope is allowing you to see that on the screen, right? Absolutely. What you're seeing here is a map of the microcirculation, the blood capillaries, within her mouth, within the lining of her mouth, showing individual red cells moving in normal shaped capillaries supplying blood to a normal surface. And how is this different to the current way of testing for mouth cancer? The normal way of diagnosing mouth cancer at the moment would be to take a biopsy, a surgical removal of a piece of tissue that we don't hurt. like the look of. It's painful, takes about a week to recover, and there's a delay of at least a week to 10 days to find out the answer. Of course, patients desperately want to know immediately what is the answer. And, it, and this is much faster, is it? This offers the potential to locate areas of greatest suspicion, make our diagnosis much more accurate, and give us a best chance of finding a cancer hiding within another lesion that can look just the same. And this isn't available anywhere, is it? No, nope, this it's is located only here at the in moment. Development. This is a research instrument. We're desperately hoping that the company will commercialise this and take us on to get into the market so that we can then make this available worldwide. And you want this to be in, in dentist surgeries and hospitals? It's applicable in its simplest form across all the spectrum of healthcare at, um, providers, both primary care and in hospitals. This has travelled for research purposes across the world and done very well so far. Is it super expensive though? Is that going to put no, some far conditions from it. off? I think the single most important, most expensive component is the laptop that provides us with the imaging software. The rest of the components are readily available and we can build this for a very modest cost. Okay, well, good luck with the project. Thank you very much. And thank you. This week's Games Review features a lot of fighting, so watch out. We've also got Teenagers in Tokyo and a game that uses boxes to solve puzzles. I'll drink to that. Here's Holly. Box Box Boy is a Nintendo sequel to their brilliant little lovely platform puzzle game called Box Boy. Now, it is amazing how much charm they pack into such a simple premise and such a simple design. Now, in the first Box Boy, QB had to go through levels by creating sets of boxes. And in this one, you can now create two sets of boxes. And it's amazing how many doors that opens. It's a brilliant little game. You know, it's not too expensive. There are loads of collectibles, loads of items. You know, you can unlock costumes, comic strips, things like that. So it has a real replayability factor to it. It's a brilliant little game to have ready on your 3DS and play it whenever you feel like you want to pass some time. In Fury, you play as a prisoner trying to escape from prison through various jailers. Now, this game is uh, various sets of boss battles made up of these jailers. It is very slick, it's very quick, and it's very, very tricky. This is a hard game. Uh, it's a mixture between swordplay, shooter, and dashing about. So it creates some very interesting mechanics. You know, it's very lovely. It looks great. The music is great. However, I was playing on PlayStation 4 and I did notice some notable uh, screen tear, so that's to keep in mind. However, if you have a PS Plus subscription, you can now get the game for free. So it's, you know, it's, it's a good one to try out. So if you like a challenge, you know, you're quite patient, you don't get frustrated easily, then maybe you should give this a go. Tokyo Mirage Sessions FE is a combination of the gameplay from Shin Megami Tensei and some of the characters from the Fire Emblem series. If you're a fan of Japanese RPGs, then there will definitely be something here for you. So in the game, you play as uh, characters from a talent agency and you need to destroy evil spirits or mirages. Now, the combat system is really enjoyable. If you're familiar with games of this series, it's the same turn-based battle system, lots of numbers flying about, lots of things to get your head around, skills to allocate and combinations you can do. So there's a lot of depth to it, and it's the really fun part of the game. The light-hearted story, kind of really fun music, and the depth to the gameplay really makes this one to look out for. Well, that's it for this week. Take a good look at Sky News on mobiles, have a look, catch up, SkyQ and Snapchat for all the latest tech stories throughout the week. And we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.